What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Madden 20 Rebuild franchise. We are about to hit another offseason here, coming off our third season of the series, one that saw us go to the playoffs for the first time and then get knocked out in the second round. It was a really fun season overall. We had an awesome playoff victory over the Cowboys and almost beat the Seahawks. So I think this team has certainly come a long way. But I'm hoping we can start competing for division titles and playing a bit more consistently now. Now, when last episode ended, I didn't even notice this myself. A lot of you caught it. But when you get to Super Bowl week, the developments will update. And we have some real changes here. Tyrus Sparks is now superstar development. So is Chris Godwin and an 89 overall wide receiver. He and Mike Evans, now one of the best duos in the NFL, right up there with Diggs and Thielen. We have Jesse Reyes, superstar development as well. And then it was revealed along the offensive line, Joe Coakley. I took him late last year, and we'd be wise to get him some playing time because he has superstar as well. Coakley was a fourth round pick, and there's a very good chance he ends up starting next year in the place of somebody like Graham Glasgow. I did like the change of Ali Marpet playing tackle, and I like having my better run blockers on the interior, and that certainly fits what Coakley's good at. 88 strength, 80 run block, so look for him to perhaps be our newest starting offensive lineman. On defense, we know Robert Cush has star development, I'm not sure we knew that before. That's not too surprising though. And we'll see what's in store today. Will Wild star development? Now, who can we add today to add to this team? We looked pretty good there in the postseason. Couldn't get it done against Seattle. Now, what's next? I will make sure that next season is played with 51 injury, but I get these questions every so often about the sliders in this series, and the key here is just don't touch them. All pro default CPU CPU is pretty fun to watch. I've been doing this on uh, this game, Madden 19, Madden 18, and it's been really fun. So I'm not messing with that formula. Besides injury, because I do want injuries to play a factor, they just had uh, the ability to get a little out of control. So 51 should uh, help it out a little bit. And now we'll do some upgrading before we get to the fun stuff. Not sure what's going to happen to our tackle situation this year if Marpet ends up starting at right tackle, which I'm not sure is really set in stone yet, but Julian Culver, he could use a little boost here. I want to go pass protector for him, and no overall boost, just two ratings. Justin Beatles has star development, we now know that. And I really want to see, you know, how far he can go. He's going to be on the practice squad likely again, only a 52 overall. If he could even develop into a backup quarterback, that'd be incredible. But we have a long way to go for that. So who do we re-sign now? I really liked what Corey Clement brought to the offense. I do have interest in bringing him back. But as far as high overall players go, I'm not really concerned about keeping too many. I think I'll let Jensen, Glasgow, Worley, Jackson, and Kerrigan all go. And probably even Marlon Mack, although the $5 million here is very affordable. But obviously, Reyes needs his carries. So he's going to play regardless. So it's just who is going to be there alongside him. Not many players will be returning, at least in this stage. I've already withdrawn offers for many players. Oh, I forgot Donovan Smith's contract is up. We're going to be moving on from him. I've already drafted players to do so. But I felt like he stepped in and played fairly well in the playoffs. Some of these players I might be willing to come back to when we get to the offseason, the open market that is. Like Jordan Leggett, I don't want to have to give him two and a half million dollars a year right now if I don't have to. Uh, Duke Gia4 could also bring him back. But you don't see me really resign players in that 70 to 75 range too much. Not like this. But hey, we got a deal done for LJ Collier. Just a one year deal, a little over a million dollars. That's not too bad. Corey Clement, 
I mean, possibly. Let's go to the open market with him too, why not? Not signing Marlon Mack right now, so okay. We sign exactly one player, and now we see what we can do. We have cap space, but it's all about opportunity. And here in Madden, you don't always get them in free agency. But hopefully there's at least one or two players here this offseason that can make a big difference for us. Let's find out. $72 million roughly in cap space. What to do with it now? As the top player on the market is pretty okay, I'd say. J.J. Watt. Oh my. He's about to get $20 million a year. Leighton Vanderesh. He's going to get big time money. Antonio Brown. Mitchell Schwartz, Justin Reed, this is more like it. Here's how the roster looks right now. Obviously, Marpet can't play two positions, so interior offensive line is an immediate need for us. At receiver, I think that our top three are all pretty good. I might bring back Watson. I just didn't want to re-sign him for uh, the requested deal. Got to bring back Jordan Leggett, I hope and figure out the running backs alongside Reyes. On defense, do we consider safety? Maybe. But back up inside linebacker could definitely be something we address. Levante David, you see the regression down to 77 overall. And I should go check out that regression menu. Wow, Perriman's regressing at age 28. Release, spin, and juke. Marpet down eight points. That's not terrible, but this is. Levante David just lost 38. That is a significant drop, and he maybe has one year left of being a capable starter. Okay, that's some of the worst regression I've ever seen. 40 points down for T.Y. Hilton. Still has 90 speed, and he's certainly playable at these ratings, but that is a lot to lose. Okay, that tops it. 54 points for Marvin Jones at age 32. He lost 10 to his release and 8 to his juke, 7 to spec catch. Wow, I wonder how the game decides, you know, how much regression is going to happen. 54 is just so much. That's got to be close to 10 overalls. Well, we have cap space, and I see a chance here to make a major difference, especially on defense. Do we bring in J.J. Watt, knowing that, you know, he's probably going to have a lot of regression after this year, but it might not matter given how good he is. Leighton Van Der Esch, that's another option. We could immediately shore up the Levante David situation right there. Uh, Mitchell Schwartz, I think that, you know, that's an interesting one to consider because it would allow Marpet to stay inside. But through the Browns... Cardinals and now the Bucks series this might be one of the best free agent classes we've ever seen and it's about time the first player I'd like to offer to is Mitchell Schwartz I really like the idea of adding him to our offensive line and allowing Marpet to stay inside and then maybe we just find a young center or something like that and we're probably going to be pretty solid there this season if that's the case 97 I think we know better now to not just go one point over after last off season. So what is this? That's 103. That's seven up. I'll take a little bit off. Six points up. Hopefully that is enough. But hey, when you have a quarterback on a rookie contract like we do with Tyrus Sparks, this is what you do. This is the new team building model. I remember, you know, when free agency and spending money was always mocked. But then the new CBA happened and rookie quarterbacks made an impact early and all of a sudden this new edge was there to obviously have solid quarterback play at a fraction of the price that you used to instead acquire veterans. And it works for a lot of teams. How do we not make an offer for J.J. Watt? We have to. 92 points right there. So let's get over what the Bengals are offering. And this is going to become a $40 million deal. We're paying J.J. Watt like an I'm not sure he's good enough quarterback. I'm pretty sure this is going to end up being close to what Case Keenum got from the Broncos. So 98 points right there. Imagine these two upgrades. 
I have been torn on whether I want to offer to Watt or Van Der Esch or potentially both. My thought is that we have Devin White, who I think is going to be a very good off-ball linebacker for a long time in this series. Off-ball linebacker isn't the biggest difference-making position, and you don't necessarily need two elite players there inside. You certainly need two at least average players, but I'm just not sure this is the best way to spend the money going after Leighton Van Der Esch. So the baseline offer gets you to 92, and the Steelers are still above that, so I think I'm out on Van Der Esch. I think Watt makes a bigger difference faster. Like, obviously, Van Der Esch being 26, you like that, you know, he's younger, he'll not regress for a while, but if we're talking about winning a Super Bowl with Sparks on his rookie deal, Watt gets us closer than Van Der Esch. Whoa, Josh Rosen at 78 overall is about to get big time money. Not going to be, you know, the biggest quarterback deal out there, but this is not going to be cheap for whoever ends up signing him. Rosen's ratings don't look too bad, but I'm interested in where he ends up because he still isn't that high in overall. We're going to make an offer here, a two-year deal for Jordan Leggett. It's a lot lower than the fair offer. We'll see if he accepts it. A one-year deal on somebody like J.C. Treader would be a good idea. Let's just get a veteran there at center. If I draft somebody, if he's, you know, if he looks good, we could play him, or we could just let him be a backup for a little bit. Looks like Marcus Davenport hasn't worked out too much for New Orleans. I think I'd be really interested in bringing him in to see if we can develop him a little bit, but it's going to have to be at a much lower price point. Worth a try. Probably won't work. By the way, I gotta spend some of this XP for Coach J.W. Unger, and I do want to work on uh, player progression here a little bit. I'm hoping to maybe leave something left over for the acquisition side of things. D-line free agency influence. That's what I want to hopefully get J.J. Watt. Let's go offensive line as well. I'm trying to get a couple players there. But I'll spend the rest then on player progression. We'll take these final points. I could go running back. And I think I will give all the help we can to Jesse Reyes. All right, an actual eventful stage one in free agency. Do we have any new players here on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, J.J. Watt is now a Buck. So is Mitchell Schwartz, J.C. Treader. There we go, major upgrades already through free agency. It's very, very exciting. I wasn't expecting anything nearly this good. But how about this offensive line now? This could be our starting five. I'm not uh, sure yet if Patterson would start at left guard. Obviously, uh, Marpet would. But uh, Coakley at right guard then, Booker, Schwartz. Still got to build depth because Schwartz is on a one-year contract, but man, that is so much better. Looks like Leggett hasn't accepted yet. Wow. This is going to be pretty fun, I feel. J.J. Watt on this defense. Let's go. Alright, Los Angeles. I guess we're not going to be getting Marcus Davenport. Maybe we can get Jordan Leggett. How about the league signings, though? Van Der Esch ended up getting a 104-point bid. 71.3 million. Yeah, I just didn't feel that was the right move for us. Big deal for Justin Reed, Nikel Roby Coleman. I thought about it, but I want to play the players we have. It's the only way they're going to get a lot better. Mac goes to Miami. Now, I could have kept him. would have been very affordable, but I just don't feel I need to make that move. I think I can get similar production out of a lower rated player, slightly lower rated player. Uh, Gallup, nice deal here as he's come along nicely in the series. Harold Landry to Miami. No offers made on running back David Johnson. And I would definitely be interested if you wanted to come here on a cheap deal. So, 68 points. There's a lot of receivers in this free agent market. So I think that you can find some really good values here if you go down to the high 70s, mid 70s range. 
So I want to make an offer here, but I don't know. This is going to be like two points probably for Kendrick Bourne and 36. So it's going to take a lot more money to get him to sign at this stage. This is one of those spots where if we wait until preseason, I can probably sign someone like even David Moore or, you know, Kendrick Bourne and be pretty happy. I believe I also have to go after another backup quarterback option and it might be a little pricey. I'm not sure if we can get him to accept something like this. But I do think Kirk Cousins would make for a good backup to Tyrus Sparks, but will he accept the offer? The combine grades are now out, and I kind of forgot about that running back for a while, but now that we're here, oh my 7.5. We gotta talk about the younger brother of Tyrus Sparks. Here we have Ollie Sparks from Washington, one of the best running back prospects I've ever seen in Madden. His top three is outstanding. He ran 4-5-1, 30 bench reps. I know we have Jesse Reyes, but imagine having Reyes and Sparks in the same backfield. That would be pretty fun. And I think Sparks has a very high ceiling, so I have to consider it. If we miss, maybe adding somebody like Von Gross, who also is a bigger elusive back. He ran 4-4-8 now. His speed's a little bit better, his strength is a little bit lower, but in the fourth round, I mean, he'd be a great pickup. All right, let's go to stage three now. Any more players signing with the Buccaneers? David Johnson has accepted, so has Jordan Leggett, and Davenport will take that big offer he got from the Chargers. So now we have two powerful running backs I pass on Marlon Mack to pick up David Johnson instead. I just like that Johnson doesn't really have a weakness. So I can have him play whatever role I need, whether that's lead back, back up, third down back, goal line. So that's a lot of flexibility. And then Reyes, like I'm really wanting him to take control of things, but at the same time, I'm trying to win a Super Bowl. The goal is to develop Super Bowl teams, not develop running backs as much as I might make it seem like it's the opposite. But I think that, uh, you know, I'll give Reyes a chance, but ultimately I'm trying to win a Super Bowl, and so I'll play the better players most of the time. There are a lot of really good running backs in this class. William Alexander, early fourth rounder with 4.37 speed, but also 22 reps on the bench. A minus elusiveness and juke with good vision. This is so impressive. Oh wow, we got the deal done with Kendrick Bourne and Kirk Cousins? Okay, I didn't expect to get those two. But I think that does help things out now. We have a higher rated backup for Tyrus Sparks. And then another fourth receiver. I thought about Watson, but there were so many other proven receivers that you had to at least take a look and someone like Kendrick Bourne would fit perfectly here. So far, this offseason has worked out perfectly for us. A lot of quality additions, and now we got the draft coming up with a chance to shore up even more spots. We have a couple second round picks in this one. This should be a really fun team when we get to the end of the year. Right now, this feels like it's a very deep and talented class at a variety of positions. And it's going to make for some tough draft decisions, I believe, when our time comes on the clock at 26 overall. Not sure yet if there's a player I'd be wanting to trade up for. I don't view any position as like a major, major need right now, given what we've been able to add this offseason. So hopefully we can find some really talented high development players and go from there. I'm not sure I need a lot of early rookie impact on this version of this team given the free agent moves that we've made. There have been a lot. Let's go to the draft. Time to begin everybody. 2022 draft and the Bengals are on the clock. I wonder if we see a draft anytime soon where quarterbacks begin to go early, but... I'm not sure who the Bengals even have these days, but they go outside linebacker Houston McCullum from Oregon State. Can't say I know much about these top prospects. I don't scout a lot of the top 10 when we are doing well, 
but after we get out of the top 10, I'll look at potential trade-up options as the Vikings go receiver. Mike Birch off the board. Evan Tomlinson. Garrison Troop. A lot of good defensive talent going off the board. Jaleel Seymour. Jarius Lemon. And Devon Joseph. Two good receivers are off the board. So if we check out my draft board... Doesn't appear like I have a ton of first round options that'll be there when we're on the clock if we stay put. I might have to look at those players who are more second round projections. If we go by this board, Jaleel Luckett is at the top of the list. And I think here you're really banking on high development because he's probably not going to make a huge impact early with that top three. But the combine's really good. A 62 middle linebacker, Glenn Stammer. Wow. That is one of the lowest overalls I've ever seen in the first round here in this game. That 62. With how deep this class has looked, I'm surprised by the overall ratings so far of these players. We'll continue simulating toward our pick. I didn't see a lot of options for trade up that I liked a lot. I think right now I want to keep my top three or four picks where they're at and hopefully make the picks there. Deron Gilbert I did consider though. 74 overall edge rusher. Just with Robert Cush already starting, I felt like I wanted to, uh, you know, I didn't want to trade up at least for a player at the same position right now, given he's just coming off of his rookie campaign. But now we're on the clock. Round one, pick 26. Here's a look at the draft board, by the way. A lot of solid second round talents out here. And maybe a couple ones. Ah, uh, there's Campbell, but he's actually a third round talent. Well, right away here, we see Jerome Page, who did not participate in the combine, but is supposed to have early round one talent. He's only 21, good coverage, good awareness. Right now, he'd be the pick, I think. Chance Campbell. We do know that he had a good combine. He's only 21. Good hit power, pursuit, and tackling. Okay, so he's solid as well. Marcus Knight. Excellent top three, but not a great combine with poor speed and agility drills. What about cornerback? Matthew McManus. Not a bad top three three and uh, combine to go with it of course Ollie Sparks is there it's definitely tempting but I think the right move here is to draft the safety I'm not sure what I want to do with that position going forward but I think bringing in a really talented 21 year old rookie would definitely help figure things out going forward Perhaps Page didn't need the combine. He's the pick. And he's a 75 overall with hidden development. And he is 7th in true value. Page, 89 speed, 78 coverage. I'd say there's a chance he finds his way onto the field here as a rookie. Looks like he'll have a fairly balanced skill set. Might not be able to man up on the tight ends that often. But overall solid player here with ball skills although a lower injury rating i really wasn't sure what i'd do here early on i just feel like we filled in so many needs already as a quarterback is off the board here lawrence hitchens to the chargers and wade mann to the falcons interesting they go early finally been waiting on that for a long time going back to the cardinal series and there goes casey casey Feel like I have a plan right now. Let's see if the game ruins that plan. So far, so good. Rashawn Barry is gone. Lee Chambers. Kevin Barron. Josh Springs, a 62 overall running back. And now, Reggie Calhoun. So you're telling me. Still on the board. Ollie Sparks. Other running backs have been taken. We have a chance right now to add Sparks. It is not a position of need, but wow, the talent is good. 
I really want to add Sparks here. I just know we don't need him right now. This is tough. And also, there are good running backs that are going to be available later, like William Alexander. We're going to make a different selection, and we're going to take Frederick Hughes, the center. Now, I don't need him to start early, and this will be graded as a reach. Only normal development. I liked that Hughes had the best bench at the position, but it only came out to 82 strength. 76 run block, 78 run block power. Definitely lower rated than I thought, with a couple weaknesses here with the finesse ratings. So we'll see if he's able to develop into a starter. Matthew McManus goes the very next pick. I thought about taking him. I like our top three at corner, and now Ollie Sparks is gone. So he'll go from Washington State to Washington, D.C., and we'll definitely check out his ratings. I wanted to take him. I just knew that it really wasn't the right pick to make there, although I don't think that the center I took is going to be great. I think oh, Cordell Wagner, I think that was going to be one of my next targets potentially very good tight end Darion Campbell now off the board and we'll be on the clock here again shortly Packers go with the right end not quite sure what I want to do with this second round pick we could address something like receiver but I like our top four a lot and I'm not taking a number five receiver in the second round there are still some offensive linemen out there, but I feel like we have enough linemen in total right now. I think the most intriguing player on the board has to be Thurman Hatcher, who is a fourth round talent, and he would be a defensive end in our scheme, and I think he would be someone interesting to go after, although his combine wasn't very good despite the high bench. They're not really giving the best trade offers either, mostly including future picks, so it's hard to just like drop 10 spots and pick up an extra four or something, so I'm gonna have to make the pick. The pick is going to be Thurman Hatcher. He is a power rusher who right away seems to have really good run stopping skills and run stopping cares about block shedding and strength, two of his best skills here. So I think Hatcher being a backup has a solid foundation and can grow into becoming a starter. And Hatcher is a good pick at 70 overall, 24th in true value. And let's see what we have for power moves then, 76. So it didn't make the top three because it was slightly lower than a couple other skills is all. But I like that he has 75 speed to go with it. I think this is a solid pick for us too. He's going to be well-rounded I think after a few years. I'm pretty happy with what's happened so far in this draft. I will definitely uh, take the results overall. Kinda don't think our second pick was great, but I'm not too worried about it. And we'll just see if my targets are here late three. I definitely want to go after a linebacker. And I feel like... I can take one in the third round, maybe wait till the fourth. Depends what values are still out there, like Alexander. I would have probably taken him. Curious how his ratings end up. But overall, I didn't want to concern myself too much with the running backs in this class and not lose sight of the current superstar development running back on our roster. I've been going through the roster trying to find out where the biggest differences can be made and I don't want to overlook D-line depth like if we were to lose Vita Vea that would be a very bad situation for us. When there is a first round talent out there with good run stopping skills and maybe some upside to pass rush I mean he does have at least um, he has the highest 40 and plus solid 3 cone 20 yard shuttle. I think you take a chance on a player like Leonard Merritt in this spot. And Merritt is a 71 overall, and his power rusher archetype isn't that low. So 90 speed, he'll need some development, but wow, you can end up with a really good player after a little while. I like that a lot. 
I knew there'd be a chance to add some really good developmental talent later in this draft. Dodge ah, Don McMahon is gone. I had interest in him, even though we did get Cousins. Von Gross to Cleveland. I'm always looking for that backup quarterback on a four-year deal. It doesn't matter who our backup is. I'm always thinking about it. Uh, Keldon Sims. I thought about getting him. He is a first-round talent, or a first-round prospect who had, like, third or fourth-round talent, and he was a pass-coverage linebacker. So I was wondering if maybe he'd be interesting here later in the draft, but he's gone. Uh, Kelvin Phillips. That is the player I wanted, that inside linebacker. I just wasn't going to trade up for him. It might be a situation where I have to sign somebody because there isn't, like, a great field general that's just waiting to be drafted here. Uh, Sylvester Spikes, I considered him. He was a fourth-round edge rusher. We could use a backup at that spot. Considered him with our last pick, but I'm glad we went in the direction we did. And now, making our way to our fourth round pick. This is about the time where a lot of my favorite values go. So, we'll see what's left. We also have two fifth round picks to make. Hopefully, we can do something with them. So, I didn't finish scouting Wesley Foster. There are still some offensive linemen out there. And I scouted, like, all these backup quarterbacks just in case. So I think the pick has essentially been made for us here. I think we have to go maybe with Adam Drescher. All three pass block ratings are his top three early two talent. Let's make the pick. 69 overall, not bad. 86 strength, a lot better pass protector than run blocker. But not a bad backup to have on the team. Starting to see a lot of high 50s, low 70s players come off the board, so might not have a lot of great talent left in this class. My draft board consists of only quarterbacks, and I have five picks projected to make here. We're going to acquire a future fourth round pick from the Bengals straight up for this one. And I'll probably find a couple players that I just want to take a chance on. Maybe a quarterback. Not sure. We do have Cousins. And if I draft a quarterback, I'm not sure I want to keep two on the practice squad. So do I keep three on the active roster? I normally don't. We're actually going to take Rashawn Anthony here, who is an early seventh round talent. He does have decent finesse moves. All I'm looking for is someone to be a backup and Anthony is a 60 overall. It's not a bad overall for this spot in the draft, but 82 speed, 75 finesse move. These are the kinds of players you draft at this part of the draft in Madden 20. I will be spending a pick on a quarterback, drafting William Lindsley here in the sixth round. He has A plus throw power. So what kind of accuracies are we working with here? In regards to William Lindsley, he is 57 overall and 90 throw power. Okay. Now we're going to select Sylvester Patton, one of the linebackers that I have scouted. He is a field general at 21 years old. Maybe a practice squad candidate. 55 overall, 82 speed, 63 zone coverage. And our last pick is going to be running back. Diamond Crutchfield. He has a 4-4-5 40-yard dash. He had a good three-cone and 20-yard shuttle. I'm thinking maybe Diamond Crutchfield could become a kick returner. He's the pick, and he's a 58 overall. Let's see. Diamond Crutchfield, 91 speed, 90 excel, 90 agility. Doesn't really have a ton of moves, though. Does he have a return rating? 87. So potentially, Diamond Crutchfield, kick returner this season. And that is the draft, everybody. What do you think of that? I know I didn't take a ton of high-rated players, but I think there are some potential difference makers here, especially these defenders I took early. Jerome Page, Thurman Hatcher, Leonard Merritt. May take a little time. Potentially, Page could play earlier. I liked his skill set. 
and now he's uh, the only hidden development player we got in this class with a definite path to becoming a starter at some point. And a lot of these picks were just for, uh, you know, maybe uh, backups that have a chance to develop. Now, I could have just traded away some of these picks, but I think that I like filling out the roster here with these players that are going to be on cheaper deals and hopefully... I get a chance to develop some of them, although I don't know that I did a good job of getting scheme fits. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the offseason, and for once, free agency is going to overshadow the actual draft, which is not normal in these series of mine. So Glenn Stammer was taken early, 62 overall, and 80 speed, 76 tackle, 79 throw power, yeah, he's not great. So that's a questionable pick right there. It was cool to see quarterbacks actually go early, man and Hitchens. But let's go into the second round and check out running back Ollie Sparks. I passed on it. As expected, hidden development. And 89 speed, 82 strength. Everything here is solid, not fantastic so he's a good all-around running back right now but unless that development is like uh, super high probably just gonna be a solid player at best which is fine I had a lot of interest in Cordell Wagner as well I knew it wasn't a need but it was intriguing he had good speed but uh, catching ratings are all very low for him so, he'll need a lot of development, obviously. How about William Alexander? He's a hidden development player as well with a lot more speed, 93. Another good all-around running back. But I feel that I'm pretty happy having DJ and Reyes now on the team. I'll still need to figure out who our third back is going to be, but I wasn't concerned about figuring that out today. Going by overall rating, here is where the top rated players went. Stanley Cohen went number 21 overall. He was the highest rated player. Jerome Page, nice spot at 26 overall getting the top safety. There were definitely some good receivers that come out of this class. Here are their top ratings. De Devin Joseph might have been the best. 6'3", 234, 92 speed, wow. Denver has a really good receiver there. 89 spec catch for him as well. How about we check out the coverage or pass rush first. Best finesse, garrison, troop, and power. That is Daniel Purvis. Ellis Holmes, best man coverage in the class. And Jerome Page, best zone coverage with a gap between him and the second best player all right i think that was a very successful off season for us and i can't wait to see what next year brings i feel that adding the veterans we did today makes us a lot better and i'm glad we were aggressive it came at the right time because this was not the best draft for early impact talent it's a really good draft for maybe in two years they're a starter talent so where do we go from here and what are your expectations entering the newest Tampa Bay Buccaneers season? Thank you all for your support so far and I'll have more of this upcoming season coming your way and please tell me this hold extra reorder is going to go away eventually. That is going to do it for this episode everybody. Please leave a like and subscribe and let me know which player that I added today is your favorite. Who is going to make the biggest impact in year four? Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you again soon.